I'm Michael Despezio and welcome. I've been producing and teaching online courses for over 20 years. And during that time, I picked up quite a few tips and techniques that I'd like to share with you. In this movie, I'd like to show you how you can produce high quality movies based upon a program you're already familiar with, PowerPoint. Once these movies are produced, you can share them with your students, with your school, and even to a global audience using YouTube. So sit back and let's dive into the mechanics of producing movies. But first, a little conceptual housekeeping as we look at the basics of movie making. First, why bother with movie making? Well, it gives you a video presence much more effective to see your face, to see you talking, to see your hands moving, maybe even bringing props into that image, than just hearing a voice or perhaps no voice at all. So this helps you connect with your students. Also, it allows your students to access your movies, this teaching at any time. So once we have these standalone objects, students can then reference them once, twice, as many times as they need. Also, it is much less pressure to develop a movie, although it's a little bit more work, than to go live. Take it from me. I've been in front of audiences, so broadcast audiences of several million, and you're kind of like that the whole time. This way, if you make an error, if you flub something, you can always go back and correct it before it gets out there. So much easier on editing and you can come up with a final product which you might feel is perfect. And finally, it lets you reach a larger audience. Sure, your students are going to be able to use these, but if it's good, why not share this with your school community or even go for a much larger community? Here's what you'll need to get started. You'll need a version of PowerPoint. Ideally, it's a fairly recent one. This way you'll be able to exploit all of its latest bells and whistles. You'll also need a webcam. Most likely, you already have a webcam set up sitting on top of your screen, like mine is right up there. You'll also need some sort of screen recorder program. They're not expensive. Uh, sometimes you can get these screen recorder programs, which are part of a video editing package. But all you need is the basics so you can record what you are showing on your own monitor into a discrete file. In that file, you'll later upload to a service such as YouTube, or you might upload it to your learning management system. So you'll need some way of sending a large file over the Internet. So why use PowerPoint? Well, there's many reasons. First of all, you probably have familiarity with the program. Most teachers do. You've been using PowerPoint for some time, and you've been using it in the classroom, and it's very easy to migrate any of the PowerPoints that you've already developed into the digital environment so you can share it online. So you already have a set, you can purchase other PowerPoints, you can tweak them, and that's the nice thing about using PowerPoint. Also, it is the ideal tool upon which to organize a show. If you look at PowerPoint, it is really a linear journey through a set of slides, and that linear journey can drive the topics that you're covering logically from one into the next, and you can have that conceptual segue which you can talk over. Also, PowerPoints are easily tweaked for video, so although you may have a cache of PowerPoints that you develop for use in the classroom, you can easily change those so that they are ideal for the class. Finally, PowerPoint is perfect for novice producers since it's so easy to use, so changeable, and you can continually re-record what you say. It is perfect for first-time producers. Those of you who know me know that I am a man of operational definitions. And as you might have inferred, what you have just watched was put together using PowerPoint. So now, let's take a look at how you too can make one of these movies. To begin, I am going to assume that you have a fairly recent version of PowerPoint installed on your computer and that you have a webcam that is hooked up. I do. 
that's me down here. Hey, how y'all doing? Okay, to begin recording, what you first need to do is open up PowerPoint. So we're going to go down to the icon here, click on it, and my PowerPoint program opens up. As you can see, I already have a number of presentations that I've already constructed. We're going to pick this one, which I've tweaked for this presentation. And this should be a familiar looking screen. Up here, we have various menu choices. Down along this left border here, we have the slide pane. So these are the slides that you're going to be using in your show. This area here, is the active window. These are the specific slides that you can work on. You can animate, you can add titles, you can do all sorts of things. And I'll address that in another movie. Beneath that, we have the note area, and this is where you can add notes. You might wind up adding notes that later you'll access when you're making the movie, but we'll talk about that later on. Right now, what I need you to do is to look up at this top menu selection, and we're going to go to where it says Slideshow. Click on Slideshow, and the menus beneath change. We're going to go to this menu right here where it says Record Slideshow. And if we click on that downward arrow, we open up two options. You can record from the current slide, or you can record from the beginning. You know what? Since our current slide and the beginning are the same, doesn't make a difference what we click on. We'll click on this one right here, Record from Beginning. Suddenly the whole screen changes. This is the screen that you're going to be working in in order to create this PowerPoint movie. Now what I'd like to do right now is to talk about the various options and menus that you have within this program and then later on we'll create an actual movie based upon what you learn. So we'll start right up here on the top left corner and you can notice that you have menu options to record, stop, or replay. When you press record, you're going to record an audio track or a video track, which is going to accompany this specific slide. So each slide is independent for the audio or the video clip that you are recording. When you're done recording, you click stop. If you want to hear what you've done, you click replay. Suppose you've recorded a narration and you've listened to it by pressing replay and you don't like it. Well, easy to record on top of that. Just go back and press the record button again and you will lay down a fresh new video or audio track on top of what you previously recorded. That will be erased and you'll have your new audio. And you can keep doing this until you get a track that you're happy with. Okay. Let's move to the right. This area says notes. And these are the notes that you wrote when you were using PowerPoint. I showed you that window area before when we were looking at the program. And if we click on here, we can see that we have notes. These are a little bit too small to see. So if we go all the way over to the right, we can change the size of that font. And you might wind up using some of these notes as reminders for your narration because when you're recording the show these notes don't show so something to consider personally I don't use the notes I use the images and the words that I have on the page to drive what I'm going to say all right let's get rid of the notes to the right here we have some more options the clear allows you to go back and to clear either the recording that is made for this slide here, or you can go and record or delete all of the recordings that you've made for the entire set of slides by clicking here. To the right, we've got another set of options, and these are for settings, and these are the microphone and the camera settings. Before I began this program, I already was using this webcam, so I don't have to change anything. Otherwise, I would go in here and select the microphone or the camera that I'd like to use. As we go down along this border, we have a arrow here. And what this arrow does, as you might imagine, is it advances the slide. So we can go to another slide, and we can then record on top of this. To get back, we go to the other side of the screen right here. and 
we'll click this to get back to our initial slide, which is this one right here. Now, in this bottom right-hand corner of the screen where I'm presenting this recorded tutorial, when you are actually making your PowerPoint movie, this same spot is where your movie is going to be. You'll be hosting it from this corner if you'd like. Now, the options that control what you're going to show or what you're going to record are found right beneath me, right here. Notice you have a microphone icon. You can turn the microphone on or off. You have a video camera mic uh, icon. You can turn video on and off. And you have the ability of showing what you're recording right in that spot. It might seem a little bit confusing, but trust me, later when we're making the actual movie within PowerPoint, you'll understand what I'm talking about. To the left of these controls, you have a palette of colors and certain tools. To best see how these tools work, we're going to advance the slide to the next slide in my presentation. Here we have a whiteboard slide. These tools include an eraser, a pointer, and a highlighter. So for the pointer, we might take a diagram like this and say we were talking about a cylinder, and we can talk then about the height of that cylinder, or we can look at the diameter of that cylinder, and we can work this just as we are using a regular whiteboard. If we presented text, we might want to highlight that text. So we can go to the highlighter right here, pick a color, and let us take Michael and his interactive tour de force of virtual reality, and we'll highlight that. So you can see how these tools are used right here. Okay, let's go back to our first slide. Now what we're going to do is shift gears a little. And I am going to leave this tutorial and actually dive right into the program. And we are going to make a narration, a video narration, based upon the slides that you saw and the understanding that you now have of these tools that are around the edges of this central frame. OK, let's see what happens. Now that you're familiar with the tools, let's actually record some video that goes along with these slides. So we'll start by going up to Slideshow, down to Record Slideshow, and we will record from the current slide. This should look familiar. And by the way, I appear again because now I am in the PowerPoint video window. And if I want to include the video of me narrating the show, we can have it posted right in the bottom right-hand corner. If you don't want students to see you, easy. You go back down here, and we go to that icon, and we shut it off, and I'm gone. But personally, I like to be seen when I'm teaching a class or an online course. So we'll click it so it's back on. This is our first slide. How do we go about adding audio or video to it? Well, as you know, we need to go back to the controls that are in the top left part of the screen. And we're going to record some sample narration. I'll go to the record button, press it, countdown. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the components of the cell. OK, that's my narration. Let's stop it right there. And we can listen to what I just recorded. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the components of the cell. OK, that's my narration. Let's stop it. If I didn't like that narration, say I wanted to change it, all you have to do is go back to record again. And let's try it one more time. Here we go. Take two. Maybe I'll like this narration even better. OK, gentlemen and ladies, right now we are going to talk about the cellular components of this animal cell that I have posted here. Blah, 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 blah. OK, let's stop the recording. And let's listen to it. Take two. Maybe I'll like this narration even better. OK, gentlemen and ladies, right now we are going to talk about the cellular components of this animal cell that I have posted here. Blah, 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 blah. OK, let's stop the recording. Let's move on to the next slide. 
So we click the forward button here, and we have the next slide. Now notice something about this. When this slide comes up, although I have the cylinder and that piece of copy set for an animated appearance, which would occur when I click the forward button on my keyboard or I click my mouse, all of those animated entries appear at once. Don't worry about that because when we get into the actual recording of the narration up here, it will take all of those elements off the screen and they will come on when I want them to be there. Watch what happens. I'm going to click on record right now. And we're back to that blank page. I will then click and we get my first element that is animated appears. It says whiteboard. And then if I click again, we get the next element, which is the cylinder. And if I want, I can go back here and then I can talk about the cylinder itself. We can circle parts of it. We have our whiteboard there. Again, if I advance the slide, the next piece that comes up is that piece of text that I talked about before. I can go here and pick the highlighter and I can highlight pieces of that if I'd like. All right, let's stop that recording. And now we'll listen to what I just did. And we're back to that blank page. I will then click and we get my first element that is animated appears. It says whiteboard. And then if I click again, we get the next element, which is the cylinder. And if I want, I can go back here and then I can talk about the cylinder itself. We can circle parts of it. We have our whiteboard there. Again, if I advance the slide, the next piece that comes up is that piece of text that I talked about before. I can go here and pick the highlighter and I can highlight pieces of that if I'd like. All right, let's stop that recording. Okay, let's go back again. Notice it's jumping up into the next piece. So let's go to the next slide. And in this slide, I have animated titles that are going to appear over this image. Notice all of the titles are there at the beginning. But when I start recording, they go away and they fade up when I click on the mouse. So if I record it like this, let's start the recording. Now, students, the cell has a number of different organelles or parts. The first one I want to mention is the nucleus, and the nucleus is the control center of the cell. Another important organelle is the mitochondria, and the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. And notice, what I'm doing is I'm clicking the advance, and now I'll talk about ribosomes. And here are the ribosomes, and all of this is being recorded. And finally, we talk about the cell membrane. Now I can stop the recording. And I can replay and listen to what I've recorded. Now, students, the cell has a number of different organelles or parts. The first one I want to mention is the nucleus. And the nucleus is the control center of the cell. Another important... Now, let's return to the familiar window of PowerPoint. So we need to close this recording area, go to the top right, close that window, and notice we get back to our familiar PowerPoint layout. And here are all the narrations that we've added in the first three slides. Notice that we have the thumbnail of the video, which is now attached to that slide. So let's click on this slide right here. If we want to hear it, what we do is go to Slideshow, click it, and Take two. Maybe I like this narration even better. Okay, gentlemen and ladies, right now we are going to talk about the cellular components of this animal cell that I have posted here. Blah, 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 blah. So there you have it, the basics of producing a movie using PowerPoint. Now, once this movie is made, you can then play it in PowerPoint and use a screen recorder to capture this movie and then save it in a discrete file. Later on, you can post that file up to a server, or to YouTube, or to your learning management system. And therefore, you'll be able to distribute this to others. Okay, that's it for now. I'm Michael Despezio, and I'll see you in another one of my videos.
Bye-bye.